ask you to play it, and you still just do your own thing. I have my own style. Every time we talk, it's a battle. A superstar. Everyone thinks because my dad is this rock star who got saved that he's cool. He is not cool. You guys have been playing together since you were like six. So, Kevin, can you do an impersonation of Brad here? <laughs> that is a great question. What a wonderful <laughs> question. If only I had a terrific answer. <laughs> Other than not yet. <laughs> I mean, you can direct him. If I were right? to sound like, oddly, like Christopher Walken. Right. Then. Kevin, if you could do the scene with your heart instead of your eyes, that would be better. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he didn't sound like that. <laughs> but, but have I? Yeah. Have either of you ever had an own it moment where you had to like own your beliefs, any sort of beliefs that you've had to really stand up for? In real life? Mm-hmm. Sure. <laughs> Please. Oh, um... Yeah, I mean, I, I'm uh, I have great sort of um, regard, revere, and respect for a family uh, heart and soul connection. So there have been moments, say, between my father and I that I felt was very relatable in this screenplay between the father and daughter, in terms of letting the child go and find their way, and the difficult nature of that. So I remember st sort of standing my ground and my faith and belief in myself and, and, and my family uh, support would be tested, but I felt like I wanted to make them proud mm -hmm. as opposed to, I need to do this because I want it. A big yeah. part of it was I need to do this to make them proud. Yeah, so what is your greatest hope for the film when it comes out? Just more of those reactions and people? My hope is that people are wildly entertained by this film, that they just look at this as just forget any message in the movie, that they just walk away going, wow, what a fun, entertaining, emotional ride of a movie. And at a, at a, at a, at a family level, I hope it stirs conversations. I hope people say, hey, you remember that scene where she did this? I hope it stirs conversations with families and, and, and their, their teenage kids, um, grandparents and teens, teens with their friends. I, hope, I do hope it stirs conversation, honest, transparent conversation about where we really are and what we really want out of life. Baby, think about what you're doing. Why you're doing it, running away, it's not the way you want to go about it. Dad, were you watching me? Boy, I think about her and everything that she could be getting into. Maybe she already has. This book is where it shook me. It was like my whole world was just flipped on its head. Now, how do you feel like you ground yourself in your, you know, are, do you resonate with the faith aspect? And Absolutely, yeah. I, I've, um, I've grown up in the church my whole life, and, and for me it's really cool. I was talking about this earlier that, you know, faith to me and my relationship with the Lord has really become something that, um, even though it was around me all the time and really kind of um, planted in my family because my mom and dad are very spiritual, I feel like for me, um, I was able to kind of make that decision on my own. Um, and a lot of people can't say that. I think Grace in the beginning is kind of struggling with, well, do I want to go to church or am I just going because mom and dad are going? Whereas now, like, my sister and I, we get up, we live in our own place together, and we go, okay, it's Sunday, like, we're going to church. Like, we don't feel like it's a family thing. It's kind of a personal connection, yeah. which you get when you're older. Um, and so I kind of made that personal relationship years ago, and it's neat that I can say that I, I have that kind of faith-based root on my own without it just being connected just because of my mom or my dad. How did you guys balance the, you know, parenthood of being kind of tough and firm but also loving? It's, well, it's, well, it's the way it was written, really. I mean, Johnny's a little bit of a hothead still. His, his impulse is to go drag her back by her hair. You know, just because he has no other way to express himself except I've got to go grab my daughter and save her. And Michelle's wise enough to go, you know what, she's an adult. That's never going to work. But she doesn't say it. She tries in that one moment where she finally just is exasperated when he's packing to leave because she knows it's the wrong thing to do. But she gives him that moment with the guitar in the green room at the radio station when she's like, you know, I'm going to let you guys do your thing. And she's always guiding them together, you know, sort of from uh, behind the scenes almost quietly. Um, and so that's kind of the balance was there. And I said this before, that if they had hired anybody besides her, it might have been a cardboard cutout, you know, too perfect mom. But thank God it was her, and it was so perfectly delivered in that way that you can go, wow, Michelle is just so much more interesting than I thought, and it should have been. The character deserved it, you know, and so. I think Brad wrote yeah. her after his wife, Haley. <laughs> I think <laughs> she's go. based on. Her. Yeah, our, our writer's <laughs> wife.